Hi there everyone, welcome to Tech Cravers. Today I'm excited to bring you a new video where I'll be testing the latest build of the Skyline emulator on Android. For those of you who aren't familiar with Skyline, it's a Nintendo Switch emulator that allows you to play Nintendo Switch games on your Android tablet or mobile device. In this video I'll be testing it on my Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra and I'll be playing some of my favorite Switch games to see how well they perform. I'll be using the latest build of this emulator which promises some significant improvements in terms of performance and stability. Now I know there are some skeptics out there who doubt the feasibility of Switch emulation on Android, but rest assured I'll be testing this emulator under real world conditions and without any advanced tweaks at all, and I'll be sharing my honest thoughts on its performance straight out of the box. So without further ado, let's dive right into it and see how well the Skyline emulator performs on Android. Oh, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more exciting gaming content like this. First off, on your Android device, and not on your PC as I'm showing you here, head over to Skyline's site and download the latest version by clicking on Get Skyline. If you become a Patreon, you can also choose to download the latest Edge version, which has a few extra goodies and can perform better in some games. Once you have installed Skyline on your device, connect it to your computer via USB, or if your device has a micro SD card, insert that into your PC instead. Head inside the internal storage and create a folder named Games, as I have already done here. Make a folder named Switch where you can drop all your Nintendo Switch dumps. And you can also make a folder named Other or BIOS or something where you will put in your Switch firmware as well as the title keys. Both the Switch firmware and title keys can be obtained from a custom firmware modded Nintendo Switch, but if you don't own one yourself, you need to use Google to understand how to get them. Since it's copyrighted material, I can't tell you in this video how to get them. The firmware can just be in the archived folder, no need to extract it. Both the firmware and the games can take some time to transfer, so go grab a drink or something and come back later. Once it all has been transferred, eject your device or unmount your SD card and put it back in your device. Oh, and I forgot to mention that your Switch dumps can be either .xci or .nsp format. To play your Switch games, you can choose from a few different controller options. There's on-screen touch controls, which are of course absolutely terrible, but you can also play using an external controller like an 8-bit though Bluetooth controller or whichever you prefer. But you can also use a mountable controller like this GameSeer X2 Pro controller that I like to use. Scroll up and click on the settings wheel. From here you can tell your emulator where you have put all your title keys, firmware and of course your Switch game dumps. Once all that is done you can scroll down a bit to GPU driver. Some devices require that you get a special driver for your GPU for this to work. These drivers can be obtained from the Skyline Discord server, but my S23 Ultra has such powerful drivers that I won't be needing anything special for the games to work. In other words, I'm using stock drivers. Scroll down a bit further until you reach the input settings, and from here you can map all your controller buttons the way you want them. And everything should be very straightforward, so now I'm gonna jump into some actual game testing. First out is Diablo 3 Eternal Collection. I played the game for around 15 to 20 minutes while testing it for this video and it ran exceptionally well. As a matter of fact, this was probably the game that works most flawlessly of all games and it almost felt as if it was a native Android game. In Skyline's game compatibility list you can read about random crashes and possible memory leaks, but none of this appeared for me when I tested the game. Maybe now it's a good time to point out that this emulator gets updated very often and it's possible that this game is 100% playable from start to finish now. Next up is Golf Story. This wonderfully charming and addictive RPG sports game combines the traditional sports of golf with an engaging story and retro style gameplay. It offers a unique blend of golf gameplay mechanics, role playing elements and humor making it a delightful and enjoyable experience for players of all skill levels. Its 2D graphics makes it easy to emulate for even lower end devices and it has absolutely no problem to work at full speed on the S23 Ultra.
over to Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, which is a remastered version of the original Super Mario 3D World game with an addition of a new expansion called Bowser's Fury, which you can see here. Both these games are listed as playable in the compatibility list, meaning that someone has completed them, but they both suffer from graphical bu bugs out of the box, with the most annoying bug being that the sky in some sequences is just black, as if it was missing from the game. Same problem with the sky in Super Mario 3D World, but this game, apart from the black sky, runs buttery smooth and as soon as the devs can fix this in an update, I think this game will be very enjoyable on my S23 Ultra. Next is the amazing Pokemon Yellow remake, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. This game runs extremely well with this build of the emulator and I'm so happy that I can bring this game with me everywhere. It might have a few minor graphical bugs but nothing that bugs me at all. This game running this well really shows the potential of the Skyline emulator if you ask me. Pokemon Sword is another game that runs very well out of the box, it's definitely playable even though it has more graphical issues than Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. This game turned yellow and crashed for me after about 15 or 20 minutes of gameplay, which means there can be a potential memory leak problem. However, in the Skyline compatibility list there are several tips on how to run this game even more stable, so I'm sure there are some good tweaks that can be made to the emulator. However, as I've already explained, I wanted to test these games without making any changes to the settings.
Rayman Legends is old by now, first released 10 years ago for the Wii U. Graphical wise this game runs perfectly fine and it really should since there are better looking games for Android in the Google Play Store. However for some reason the game suffers from audio stuttering or distortion which is kind of annoying since the rest of the game runs perfectly fine. I'll turn up the volume now so you can judge for yourself. And last but not least we have Cuphead and just as with Golf Story this visually stunning 2D platformer will just work 100% without any problems with the Skyline emulator. And before I wrap this video up I'll show you some gameplay from this game as well. Thanks for watching my video on Nintendo Switch emulation using the Skyline emulator on my Galaxy S23 Ultra. I hope you found this video informative and enjoyed learning about the capabilities of the Skyline emulator. Nintendo Switch emulation on smartphones is a fascinating topic and I'm excited to see how it develops in the future. But taking in consideration how much have happened in the last year from the devs at Skyline, I think it's pretty safe to say that Switch emulation will be just as good as GameCube and Wii is on Dolphin and Wii U is on Seamu. If you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. And if you haven't already make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on all my latest content. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.